Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really good. I Best love it. Passover cake I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, we're just gonna cool it out on this one. I have the perfect Passover cake for you. It has chocolate, almond, and pears, and it has no matzo meal. The reason that Passover desserts have traditionally been not so great is they rely on matzo meal, which is basically like eating edible sawdust. Fortunately, we have lots of options today. We have almond flour, we have quinoa flour, we have cassava, we have all sorts of coconut flour, alternative ingredients that we can use to make delicious, moist, flavorful Passover cakes. And today we're gonna make a really great one. The thing I really love about this cake is it takes its cue from the Sephardi tradition of using nuts and eggs to kind of like bind desserts together. That's kind of an ancient tradition. This is sort of a modern interpretation of it. So you're going to preheat your oven to 375. We're gonna start with our topping. And this is really where the flavor comes in for the cake. We have brown sugar. We have chopped up almonds. We're gonna mix them all together. We have cinnamon and chocolate chips. I'm gonna use my hands to just mix that all together. And that's all there is to it. It's already like perfuming the air with cinnamon and it smells like Passover already. The next part of the cake is our base. So this is an almond flour base. Almond flour is Passover's absolute best friend because it gives you the structure that you want in a cake. So to that, we are going to add some baking powder. We're also gonna add potato starch. The last thing we're gonna add is just about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And we're just gonna whisk it together. So I'm gonna put these two things aside and I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients for my cake ready. We're going to put together the liquid part of our cake. And we're gonna start with three eggs. With any Passover cake or regular cake where you wanna get lift, you wanna really make sure that you aerate the eggs really well. So we're gonna mix them. So what you're really looking for is at this first stage, you want the eggs to be sort of frothy and just starting to get a little bit light. And then we're gonna add our sugar and we're gonna continue mixing until it gets billowy and kind of starts to lighten even more and gain some volume. And this is what's gonna help add structure to the cake and lift. You need about a teaspoon of vanilla. I never measure vanilla. It's so delicious. If you have a little bit more than you need, it's not a problem. I'm just gonna let that mix while I pour in the oil. So the last step before we start to assemble the cake is to take this delicious almond flour mixture and gently fold it into our wet mixture. Just kind of gently pick it up from the bottom and fold it in. So if you fold for too long, you can start to deflate the eggs and that can affect the texture of the cake. So you just wanna mix it until everything is incorporated. And now we're ready to build our cake. So you're going to line a nine inch spring form cake pan with parchment paper. You are going to start by taking half of this batter and putting it into your prepared cake pan. I promise you, it's gonna work out. It's gonna look like it's not enough batter. We're gonna take half of our pears and we're gonna spread them in an even layer throughout the top of the pan. And we'll follow that up with half of our brown sugar and almond mixture with chocolate, of course. And then you're just gonna do that whole process again. Pears make this cake the exact opposite of your typical Passover cake. They add so much moisture, so you're never gonna have a dry Passover cake again. So now you're gonna put it in the oven about 40 to 45 minutes. And once this cake comes out of the oven, you're just gonna stick it on a wire rack and let it cool completely before you cut it. 